certainly the way I look at drones is how I engage with organizations. So I assist uh, blue chip organizations, <coughs> excuse me, to adopt these new technologies to either reimagine their existing business, to, to reimagine how they do things, how they deliver services to clients, to increase uh, productivity and efficiencies inside the organizations, or we build new businesses uh, for these blue chip companies. We build the disruptive new businesses that you see in the headlines. And, and perhaps a reflection on what happened this morning, the debates we're having about the regulations uh, and how do we catch up to the rest of the world. I want to just perhaps share with you that this kind of debate is happening with every single new disruptive technology. Be it something as basic as cloud to artificial intellig intelligence to autonomous uh, vehicles and cars, etc. Um, the world is struggling and business and governments and regulators are struggling to wrap their heads around things like blockchain and cryptocurrencies and AI and drones uh, to figure out how to unleash the innovation potential of these technologies but at the same time ensure that there are good controls in place and that the citizens and organizations are kept safe. I saw a great uh, um, word equation uh, last week when I was working in Europe which basically says innovation equals opportunity plus threat. And we tend to all be focused on the opportunity, and, but we've got to become cognizant of the threat. And the threat is not just the, the basic cyber and so on. It's about how this impacts businesses and, and populations. So over the next uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to chat to you about uh, drones in the construct of this digital revolution, the buzzword that everyone speaks about, Industry 4.0 and perhaps un unpack some practicalities of how it's actually playing out um, and, and surface some of the anxiety that, that we are experiencing. And so as a, as a foundation for the conversation, I'm going to start off with a thing called Moore's Law. Does anyone in the room know what Moore's Law is? Most of the people with technology backgrounds will know what Moore's Law is. It's a theory that's been around for about 60 years. I imagine five to six decades. And it simply states that technology will double in capability and halve in price every 18 months. I'm going to say that again. Technology is going to double in capability and halve in price every 18 months. And the practical effects of that is that uh, if we have a look at the music industry, we go from a gramophone and 130 years later we have an MP3 player, an iPod, and then five years later the iPod is disrupted and obsolete. So no one in the room uses an iPod in public anymore. You'll, keep it, you'll use it at home, but you certainly don't, uh, use it, you don't take it out. It's like a Nokia phone, something like that. And so that behavior, uh, you know, it's, it's the green line. It's an exponential behavior. It sort of multiplies on itself. It's the same thing as the compounding effect of money. And this is what technology has been doing. This theory has, has remained true for the last couple of decades with a couple of nuances over the last couple of years. Uh, as we struggle to increase the, the power of technology in a very small space. And, and how it plays out in, in real world is that businesses that adopt these technologies, drone technologies, AI, etc., behave like the exponential effect of technology. Their business accelerates in terms of how they have an impact on the market, how efficient and effective they are in running their businesses, how they win clients over, how they solve problems. But the challenge and the challenge comes out in the conversations we're having this morning is most of us are either still operating with linear businesses or we have a linear mindset. So when we see these disruptive technologies coming at us, we tend to be a bit cynical about it. we dismissive. It's, it's very interesting, it's very cool and very creative, but it's taken so long for established industries to get to where they are. It's taken them decades to build up their balance sheets and their client networks. And so we typically don't... Uh, see the potential of these new disruptive technologies, or we find all the reasons as to why it's not going to be taken up, or problems with the regulators, and all the barriers uh, that, that are preventing these technologies from taking off. But the reality is, these businesses are enabled by these technologies, so as the technology doubles in, in capability and halves in price every 18 months, it gets to the point where all the little glitches and errors and hassles that these businesses had uh, that we're using these technologies, thus start getting eliminated out the system. And before we're realizing it, we're having a great impact in the market. Uh, and ultimately that impact comes in the form of chaos and amazement. Typically the chaos and amazement that a, a, a traditional video store experienced when they got disrupted overnight by Netflix, 
or that we've experienced in the taxi industry locally with the advent of Uber, that kind of chaos and amazement, then there's nothing that the old business can do to catch up to that kind of disruption. You can't put your foot down on the strategic gas pedal and, and catch up to it. And, and without a doubt, that same thing has been happening uh, in the industry and in the science of drones. And if I reflect on my own personal experience, my, my first exposure to drones was the, using it as a toy. It became a, a cheap alternative uh, to a radio-controlled airplane. <coughs> I could walk into a store, buy it, take it home, charge the battery, and then create a tremendous amount of havoc at home, breaking stuff, breaking the drone, etc. Uh, and before you know it, a few months later, then you'll see a friend that's got a drone, and this drone's now super stable. His eight-year-old kid is flying it, flipping it, etc. And it's not the kid that's more talented, it's the technology that's developing at such a pace. And so this continues. And the tipping point for me in understanding the impact of this technology, and by the way, when we look at this as a, as a toy, we all have conversations, imagine what we could do with this. Imagine if you could use the drone to do that. Uh, and before we know it, those things are happening. And I was building a, a business for a, a client that was moving into the agricultural space, and we were looking at robotics and artificial intelligence and sensors and IoT, et cetera, to, to essentially look at a different way of delivering on an agricultural product. And I came across um, a, an opportunity that was funded by the Gates Foundation. Uh, you, you're familiar, Bill Gates runs a, a foundation, and one of the things that he's trying to eliminate is malaria. And the technology that we came across was a, a laser, a, a drone with a laser mounted on it. And this drone would fly around at night, it was a fixed wing drone, fly around at night, it had a thermal camera that would pick up on the mosquitoes that were flying in the area. It would use an algorithm to figure out if it was a female or a male mosquito based on the frequency of the wings, and then it would zap the mosquito uh, with that laser. And, and it sounds like science fiction, but the reality is that it's that chaos and amazement. It progressed so quickly, and actually I think I've got a, slight, uh, a short video clip. Let's see if it plays, yeah. There we go. Uh, there's an image of the mosquito getting zapped by the laser. So it'll actually pick up that it's a, a female mosquito based on the frequency and, and it zaps this mosquito. Now this project never took off. It was a great experiment, uh, but I don't, I don't think the efficiencies were there. The technology wasn't there to achieve the results. But the drone technology in fighting malaria and combating malaria progressed into other areas uh, using thermal cameras and very clever sensors to, to identify breeding areas for, of mosquitoes and then sending in pesticides manually or uh, um, sending in uh, sterile mosquitoes uh, into the area or capturing those mosquitoes out the air. So there's been a variety of it. And it just shows you how easy the, the technology uh, progresses. And, and this certainly captured the imagination that we had moved beyond having these imaginative conversations uh, to ex experiencing science fiction in real life. And this is Moore's Law. Uh, playing out uh, at the pace that it promises to deliver against. Uh, a year later, in actual fact, uh, last year I presented at the World Economic Forum on the leveraging of digital technologies and innovations to disrupt healthcare in the form of accessibility to healthcare and affordability to healthcare. And again, what comes up? Drone technology playing a key role on the African continent to change the way in which the super poor on our continent access uh, medicine. So typically in East Africa, to deliver products to rural clinics takes three to five days if the weather's good and the roads are in decent condition. Uh, and now we're doing it in three to five hours. Uh, this was actually the launch of the, the drone uh, program. I think it's by a company called Zipline uh, in Rwanda, in which uh, they'll receive notification from a clinic that they need life-saving products, blood products, vaccines, etc., cetera, uh, painkillers, antibiotics, and so on. And they fire off this drone um, and the, the drone can either land on site to deliver the products or it parachutes the products into the region. So once again, you know, moving from seeing, that this, seeing this technology as a, a really cool toy towards something that's changing lives and having a tremendous impact uh, on the people that use it. And that progression, if you unpack it further, um, this has now become pervasive across a variety of industries where the drone is either the vehicle that provides the service or it's the highway on which you place the vehicle to provide the service. So it's not just about the drone, it's about the ability to mount very smart uh, and exponential technologies onto these drones to provide a, a product and service that is pretty differential. 
Take it a step further, and again, you see that exponential curve coming through, and this is the VC activity that's taking place around the world at the moment. And what you find is as time passes, there's more IPOs taking place relating to drone businesses. There's a lot more uh, funding going into the sector, a lot of mergers and acquisitions as the industry matures. And it's quite encouraging to see the level of activity that's, uh, that's taking place. Now let's make it practical and bring it again back to the world of business. So exponential curves can be described in the world of business along the theory of the six Ds, right? So the first three Ds we've spoken about, it's a digital technology. At first we dismiss it because we don't believe that this technology can actually, you know, it's got a long way to go and it's full of errors. Uh, but then it gets to the point where it starts really becoming disruptive. It starts challenging established businesses, established products and services. And how it plays out in the market is either through the de dematerialization of businesses. In other words, I compete with you without your infrastructure. The demonetization of businesses, that means that I change the business model. I don't sell you my product anymore. You use my product for free and perhaps you become the product that I make money off. And then finally, the democratization of businesses, which is really different way of working, a different way of looking at data. And there's some iconic companies that fit into these categories that we often speak about and see in the press. It's the Airbnbs and the Ubers for dematerialized businesses. You know, that makes sense. They, they took a, without infrastructure, they disrupted the businesses that had invested heavily into infrastructure. Uh, demonetized businesses ways, we all use it. Uh, it's free, and this is a phenomenally, it's a company that makes a phenomenal amount of money. And then de democratized businesses, of businesses that essentially uh, change the way in which they share IP and data. Now, if we bring it back to the world of drones, and let's, I, th I think the two Ds that impact drones is the dematerialization of businesses and the democratization of businesses. So let's unpack dematerialization. Just to make it practical, um, artificial intelligence, which is one of the most um, mind-bending technologies that we're playing with at the moment, you know, how they're dematerializing uh, uh, industries is replacing professionals. So replacing doctors, replacing lawyers, replacing consultants. This is happening as we speak. Drones and drone technology is perhaps doing something very similar to the industries that they've been targeted at. So companies like Zipline, we spoke about earlier, dematerializing the logistics uh, network, you know, leapfrogging the lack of infrastructure to deliver life-saving products and any other products. And then we can bring it back into cities, and there's companies like QuickQuick. I don't know if you're familiar with QuickQuick. They've been piloted at the moment in San Francisco, changing the way in which you deliver product to people's homes. So dematerializing or challenging or disrupting the typical courier company and delivery models that exist in cities. Drone Scan, and there's another company that I don't have on here called Aerobotics that do a lot of stock take. Uh, we've actually been using them in our audit process. So changing the way in which we do this very tedious and time-consuming stock take of structured and unstructured products. We've now integrated them into the audit offering with our, uh, with our audit service line. Uh, and so they're quicker and they're far more accurate in terms of how they take stock. And then we, I heard you speak about it earlier, but I've actually been dealing with the, the, uh, the, the, our equivalent of the Department of Trade and Industry in Dubai around this project to transport people with uh, autonomous uh, drones. And, and they are serious about this. They are throwing a tremendous amount of money at this and they want this ready by the World Fair, which I think is in two years' time. And so this is going to happen. They're going to work out the glitches and the fear that's associated with that technology. So some practical examples of where drones are already dematerializing the industries that they're targeted at. Perhaps not just the drone itself, but the technology that is placed on the drone and then can be delivered in a very effective and cheap way. And then if you look at democratization of businesses, this is where we, it's, it's a different way of working, it's a different way of looking at IP and data. The most disruptive technologies at the moment are the IoT companies, uh, which is surfacing data that exists inside organizations that have been there for years but we've done nothing with. And they're surfacing this data on a real-time basis and allowing organizations to make immediate decisions that enables machine learning, et cetera. So what you're doing is you're unlocking a tremendous amount of efficiency that has got a very clear return on investment for people that invest into that. Things like the blockchain, uh, neuroscience, uh, is uh, other examples of technologies that are uh, democratizing uh, the industries that they're targeting. Now, if we move across, again, into some examples of drone companies, and you may be familiar with some of these. I think there may, might, may be one or two that's operating locally. But these are organizations that are surfacing data in, in the industries that they're targeted at that is adding a tremendous amount of value. 
either into agriculture, infrastructure maintenance, etc. And so if deployed correctly against the right strategy, uh, the data that they create pays for the technology immediately. It makes the organizations that are using them far more efficient and far more competitive, not just locally and globally, which is a, a critical thing and takes me into my uh, final slide. Irrespective of, of how large or complex an organization is or how big their strategy document is, ultimately there's two things, one of two things that you try and achieve in your strategy in order to be successful in the industry that you're in. You either want to be the lowest cost producer of a product or service, I'm not saying the provider of the cheapest product or service, the lowest cost producer. In other words, you are the Saudi Arabia of oil. It doesn't matter how cheap the price of oil gets, Saudi Arabia will always be the winner. So that is certainly a goal. Most companies in South Africa and most companies around the world strive to be the lowest cost producer uh, in the industry. Or you want to be the highest value differentiator. That means that you try to delight your clients at all expenses. It doesn't matter how much it costs you, your clients are going to have a phenomenal experience when they deal with you and they pay a premium perhaps to, be, to either use your product or service. So think of buying an Apple machine or an Apple phone. You're paying almost double the price of any other smartphone, but there's an experience that comes with it from the way they manufacture the technology to how the box is uh, packed and that sound that it makes when you open the box. All that is engineered and they spend a tremendous amount of money in it. I do believe that drone technology is playing a significant role in achieving your clients uh, or uh, in assisting your clients uh, to find that low cost uh, differentiation. So whether it's uh, agri-tech to monitor the condition of crops so that farmers can make quicker decisions or deploy the proper chemicals in the fields to monitoring infrastructure, uh, preemptive maintenance of infrastructure, etc. I do believe that is uh, the, the primary role that drone technology does provide organizations. There are instances in, in the example of uh, companies like Quick Quick that are uh, delivering, using drones to deliver products uh, that have been bought online uh, almost immediately. They're trying to drive that uh, immediate gratification of an online purchase. And without a doubt, they're doing it very cost effective compared to a courier, traditional courier or delivery service. Uh, but they are certainly driving the light with the client. Perhaps the, the last barrier to complete buy-in uh, to online services. Uh, and that's it from our side. I suppose the key message that I would leave with you is that when we are facing these, uh, these new changes, these new waves, uh, different stakeholders in the room, is that um, certainly we've got to get around the table, collaborate, co-create the things that needs to happen in order for the industry to thrive. And it's, it's, it's about taking a mindset that says we are open to learning um, and being challenged as opposed to thinking that we've got all the answers and that the other party uh, is wrong and, and is holding us back. Thank you very much.